Hello everyone, in this video we are going to explain how to perform assessment of ear, nose and throat. So first we are going to start with ear assessment. First we are looking, observing to make sure that ears are intact, ears are symmetric and there is no lesion or um, inflammation going on at least at the outer ear. So by outer ear I mean like Penna or trigus and also uh, the back of the ear and also we check the mastoid bone, mastoid process bone to make sure everything is normal. We also ask patient to see if they feel any uh, pain or tenderness uh, in their ears. And then after observation, then we are moving forward with observing the ear canal. So we are checking to see if there is any blockage going on. So in order to do that, we have a device we call otoscope. So we have it right here. I'll show you guys and make sure it's on. Perfect. It is on. We make sure it's on and you guys hold it like as if like it's a pen. Okay. We are not holding it as a hammer. We are holding it as a pen. And then in adult, we remember um, this is really, really important. We have to pull the pinna up and back. And then we go and look into the ear canal. Okay, perfect. And then we do the same thing on the other side. But in children, um, we are pulling the pinna down and back. So that way we can see the ear canal better. Perfect. After this, we are moving forward with hearing assessment. So now we assess the ears. Now we are moving forward with hearing assessment. We do have three hearing assessment. One is whisper test. We start always with whisper test. And then second is Weber test. And then the third one is Rini test. So with the, Weber, uh, with the very first one, which is whisper test, we are going to stand on our patient's back. And then after standing here, we can explain it to the patient that we are going to stand two feet away from you and we are going to whisper that. But what we are going to ask the patient, we remember always with the assessment, start with the side that is normal. For example, if my patient says I have pain and issue with my right ear, then I start my assessment on the left ear with the good side and then we move forward with the side that they have pain or other issues. So we explain. So if I'm assessing the uh, left ear, I'm going to ask my patient with the other hand to occlude this ear and also use the other finger or hand to rub close to the ear canal. So that way it's going to create the white noise. And then when I, um, uh, whisper on the other side then a um, patient can tell me if they are able to um, you know tell me exactly what they heard so uh, we usually use um, like three um, word the combination of three letter and words like for example i can say stand two feet feet behind uh, the patient and then um, say and then ask the patient to repeat that. And then next time when I'm trying to um, assess on the other ear, I can mix this combination. For example, say two C A, and then see if patient heard. If they are able to uh, say whatever I said, um, then perfect. They are okay and it's everything is normal but if we try six times and out of six times they say four times four time wrong then what it is we are moving forward with the Weber test so the Weber test as you guys see we use 512 um, you know tuning forks for this one so this one we are going to first vibrate this tuning fork and then we make sure to not touch the actual top part because if I if I vibrate that and touch it, the vibration is gonna stop. So I vibrate it and hold it from the base of the fork and placing it on top of patient's head. And I'm gonna ask patient 
where they hear the loudest vibration. And then by this one, we can say if this issue, the hearing issue, lateralize to left side or right side. So they will able to tell us. And then after that, if uh, we find the issue, which ear is the problem, then we can move with the Rini test. So Rini test, we again do the same thing. We vibrate the fork, hold it from the base, and this time we place it on the mastoid bone. And then this time we ask patient, tell us when that vibration goes away. When patient says, I no longer hear, we do not touch the top part we just move it and we place it on the shoulder which is closer to the ear canal and then we ask do you still hear and tell me when you no longer hear that this way this really test basically telling us if this issue the hearing issue is related to the bone conduction or ear conduction so which later in upcoming videos i will explain more in detail about the weber and rini test so you guys will be clear about that after checking the uh, ears we are moving forward with the nose so with the nose assessment as you guys know first thing with assessment we are observing we are checking to see if there is any lesion going on on the nose or if there is any inflammation or if they have any uh, bleeding going on or if there is any uh, you know if they have any rhinitis or runny nose or any stuffy nose so and then after observation we are going to ask patient to with one hand occlude one nostril and inhale deep to see if that nostril is intact or not and then we can do the same thing for the other nostril and then after that we are going to uh, look into the um, to the nose again so again we are going in this case i'm going to ask my patient to extend their neck so we can see the nostrils better okay and then by checking that we can also use our pen light either one is correct you can use either your otoscope or pen light to shine the light and see that the other thing that you can do while you are assessing the nose is going to be uh, just a kind of illuminate the light over the sinuses like you can start with the frontal sinus and then move to the maxillary sinus so in case they have any um, you know issue or inflammation uh, for example sinusitis then it's gonna be showing like fluid uh, tract uh, on when you are shining the light you can see that and you can see the inflammation and also you can touch palpate and tell your patient to report if they have any um you know pain or discomfort while you are palpating their sinuses and then after that as i said we are checking to see if they have any polyps on their nose or if the mucous membrane on the nose is nice and um, moist and like all those assessments on the uh, nose after nose assessment we are moving forward to throat assessment so with the throat we are going to first make sure we have proper ppe because by um assessing the mouth and you know tongue area and tongue and throat area we are basically going to touch their mucous membrane so if there is any infection going on we just want to make sure we have proper ppe uh, so if they have also any dentures they need to remove them so we can simply check everywhere like including their tongue their gum their you know side to side over the cheeks and like all the mucous membrane so first we are going to use our pen light and tongue depressor so simply i'm going to ask my patient to open wide say ah oh, perfect i can check the tonsils i can check the uh, soft plate i can check their tongue their tongue their throat perfect if there is any inflammation going on and everything we can simply use the tongue depressor also to a kind of um, move their cheeks to the side so we can see the side of the mouth 
So make sure that everything is nice and patent and there is no ulcer going on. Um, after checking that, we can also use the gauze to hold the tongue and also check behind the tongue to our also, you know, a kind of the floor of the mouth. And also we can check to make sure the tongue is normal. After that, we can ask our patient to simply stick the tongue out because we want to make sure tongue is midline. If they stick their tongue out and um, the tongue is deviated to the side, then that indicates there is lesion on that nerve that is controlling their tongue. And also we can gently check um, their gag reflex by them saying, oh, so we can use something soft like this Q-tip and then a kind of uh, touch their back of their tongue and throat to check for the gag reflex. So the gag reflex is basically checking to see if two cranial nerves are intact or not. Number one, cranial nerve nine, and number 10 and the other one is number 10 cranial nerve 10 or vagus nerve so basically we are checking glossopharyngeal nerve and also vagus nerve with the tongue deviation we are checking the um, hypoglossal nerve to see if it's intact or not so that is cranial nerve 12. Uh, so basically this is um the you know assessment that we are going to do so also you want to make sure with the gauze to check their teeth and also the gum area to see if there is any bleeding going on or if they have any uh, pain or inflammation at the gum or if they have any loose um, teeth so all of that is included in this assessment so you make sure to practice to you know feel comfortable when it comes to real assessment on your patients thank you so much for your attention